Income tax, 2023-2024. Health savings account, HSA deduction tax software example. Get ready and some coffee so we can stave off the government attack with income tax preparation, 2023-2024. Here we are in our Form 1040 tax software example using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to form schedules instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting with our normal starting point, taxpayer Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid a dang taxman. Living in Beverly Hills, 90210, single filer to start off with. W-2 income, 100000 We have the standard deduction, 13850 Taxable income, therefore, 86150 which we can mirror in our income tax formula, 100000 13850 Taxable income, 86150 Tax calculated by the software starting at the 14266 which is on page 2 of the Form 1040, as we can see. Let's go back to the first page. We're going to be focusing in this time on the line 10. Adjustments to income from Schedule 1, line 26. Let's go over that. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Schedule one and check it out if we could. Schedule one, additional income and adjustments. We're on page number two which is going to be the adjustments to income. And we're looking at that health savings account, which could be further coming from the form 8889. In a prior presentation, we went into more detail about the qualifications to be able to set up and put a deductible contribution into a health savings account, otherwise known as an HSA. But a quick recap here, you're going to need to have that high deductible insurance plan Uh, generally and then the tax questions that will come up are in a similar way I like to compare these kind of tax tools to say an IRA because I think people have a better understanding of how the IRA works the question for taxes in points of time when we use these tools is do we have a tax consequence when we put the money into the account which is basically kind of like a normal financial type of account a savings account or stocks and bonds, for example, in the case of an IRA, typically stocks and bonds, in the case of a savings or a health savings account, possibly a savings account, we're gonna put that into a normal kind of account under the umbrella of a uh, tax tool, like an IRA or a health savings account. Do we get a benefit when we put the money in? And then the money will hopefully grow over time with interest that will accumulate or dividends if it was a mutual fund or the growth of the value of the stock, which is basically capital gain growth. Do we have to pay taxes as that money grows? That's the next question. And then when we take the money out, is there a tax impact when we take the money out uh, of the account? So here, when we're looking at the adjustment to income, we are questioning the initial putting money into the account and whether we get a tax benefit when we put the money into account and uh, typically we could that's the incentive to be putting the money into the account although it will be severely restricted we won't be able to take it out unless we use it for the the things that it's supposed to be used for and otherwise it might have to be included in income or possibly subject to a substantial uh, type of penalty so that's the general idea so how do we put the money in there well 
it could be something that is set up and helped to set up through the employer. So the employer might be helping out to set up the health savings account, even though the health savings account is typically something that could be movable fairly easy uh, by the employee if they were to change uh, jobs. If it was put in there by the employer, then you would think it would be pretty easily reported on the W-2 form. So you'd get the W-2 form and then in box 12, I believe, you're going to have this W, uh, which would say employer contribution, including amounts the employee elected to contribute using section 125 to your health savings account. So we'll be able to see that and that'll be a, a, a fairly easy for us to see. So if I was to mirror that, we can say, let's go into our wages and let's say that we have a W in box 12. And then I'm going to say, let's say that they, they put in, the employer put in $1,000 into the health savings account. So I would have my data input screen here. If I go back on over, that might not be enough to pull in because there's still more information I might need from form 8889. Now, also just to realize as I do that, this might be something that should be reduced from income. So that would mean that it might not be included then in uh, the wages. So, so the wages, if I earned 100,000, maybe we would have, uh, we would only have the 99,000 here. And then the social security, if it was, uh, may or may not be, if it was deductible for social security, you would have the social security and Medicare. I don't really want to change these because I want to keep, I don't, I don't want to have to change them every time. Uh, but just realize it should already be reduced uh, properly in the income boxes on the W-2 and then uh, put down here. Therefore, you might not have a deduction, but it already is accounted for because it's been included for income. So that's why the W-2 is kind of nice, but you'd have to be able to explain that to someone. So let's go then down to that 8889 just to check that out. So we're going to go to, 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 to form 8889. There it is. And so now it's it's defaulting to uh, the self only uh, plan. But you might have to add that information in order to, to pick it up. So it's still populating this form so that uh, we're attaching it. But you, you can see it's not something that's feeding into a deduction on the on the schedule one because the income we're imagining has already been reduced to the 99,000 because uh, of the W-2 has been reported thusly on the W-2. Now, if you set up this HSA and they only put $1,000 in, you might then be able to uh, put more money into the HSA uh, health savings account yourself, which would not be reflected on the W-2, right? So now I can go, okay, well, they put some money in, but they didn't max it out. I could still put more money in there. So let's say I'm going to go jump to the data input. And let's say that, and here's where I put in that it was a self only plan. So let's say that I then want to max out uh, my contribution. So, and this is something, by the way, that is something I believe you have until the filing of the return, not including extensions. So in other words, we're looking at tax year 2023, the, you, you could set up the HSA. And if you haven't funded it, then you possibly might be something you don't have to do before the year end, which is usually most things you have to do for taxes, but rather up until April 15th of the following year, not including extensions for the filing deadline. So if I go back on over, you can see now it's putting in the 2850 here. So if I go then to my form 8889, let's just analyze this a bit. This is the health savings account, the HSA. We're looking at the self only. So now we have the HSA contributions made for 2023, including those made by uh, unextended due date uh, of your tax return that were for 2023. So here's what the 2850. And then we have if you are under 55 at the end of 2023 and on the first day of every month during 2023, you were or were considered an eligible individual with the same coverage, enter 3850. So if you had the family 
that's where the 7750 uh, comes in. Enter the total you and your employer contribute to your Archer MSA. So we don't have an Archer MSA. That was kind of like the old, the old thing. We're on to the new thing. And then we subtract and then enter the amount uh, from line five. But if you and your spouse each have separate HSAs and had family covered, covered under HDHP at any time during 2023, see the instructions for the amount. So if you were age 55 or older at the end of 2023, married, and you and your spouse had family coverage under an H high deductible health plan at any time during 2020, enter the additional contribution and then add, and then the employer contributions made into, so here's the employer contribution was 1,000. So we subtract that out. We have 2,850 that is still available. So the bottom line is you had a maximum because it's a single, it's a self plan maximum 3850 your employer already put in 1000 that's already given you a tax benefit reflected in the w2 by reducing line one uh, of the forms therefore it's been excluded from income before you even put it into the tax return but then you contributed this other 2850 which then isn't reflected in the w2 and therefore needs to be deducted somewhere else, which is why that's the part that's going to be on schedule one, uh, page number two. And then so it flows through here, duh, 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 and then it's going to flow through to the form 1040. So now we're at the 99. And then we've got the above the line deduction 2850 getting us to the 96 150 standard deduction 13 850 for 82 300. If I mirror that in our Excel worksheet, I'm going to say the income went down to 99,000. We need an above the line deduction or adjustment to income, adjustment to income. And I'm just going to scroll down and say, let's pull this down and I'll just put it right here. And we're going to call, say it's a, it's a contribution to HSA. And let's say we'll put the maxes over here, max is going to be i believe it was just so we have that on our notes the general max unless there's an an, an age limit and so on was three thousand eight fifty seven seven five zero so three thousand three thousand eight fifty three eight five zero and this is for so single fam and seven seven uh 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 where did it go seven seven five zero seven seven five zero okay and then we're gonna say to do it make this black and white and i can't pull in the full amount there because there was an employer contribution so i'm gonna i'm gonna have to data input it and say okay oh yeah one thousand went in there by the employer 2850 so i'm going to say all right 2850 oh, double click in here i'm going to add that last bit pull that into the first page of the form 1040 99000 minus 2850 gets us to the 96 150 96 150 on the form 1040 96 150 okay minus the 13850 gets us to the 82300 82 300 page numero dos 13419 so let's just say 13419 boom okay so that's going to be that now if if it wasn't a family plan well i mean to say if it is a family plan instead of a self plan then those limits change right so i can go back on over i can go into here and say did you what if I'm going to jump into this one and say that now it's a family plan too. If I'm not going to change the, the marital status and whatnot right now, but just to give a general idea, if I jump on over now, it's at the 6,750. If I look at my form for the calculation, here we have the, the 6,750 and they put in a thousand dollars. We have the total coverage of the 7,750 that we could deduct 
but the employer already took 1,000 of it reflected in W-2 income, reducing it by 1,000 in box one, which means that we can still contribute the 6,750. So if your employer, if it's going through your employer and they don't max it out, but they're putting money into it based on withholdings of your paycheck, then this is another area where you might be able to do last minute tax planning, which like the IRA is only going to be something that's beneficial if they have the money to put money into this tax planning. And this is, this is again, where I think it's a little bit uh, kind of, you know, uh, these IRAs in here, you have the same kind of situations with the 401k. They actually help wealthy people, even though they're trying to incentivize people to, to do kind of the right thing. The argument is they're nudging people to put money away for health care and retirement. But in practice, what's happening is, you, is you're going to increase all of the amounts that you can put into these funds, which only benefit the people that have the money <laughs> to put this into the funds. So this, this one's a little bit tricky uh, because notice when you're talking about like a, a 401k plan, then if, if, if you have enough money to put money into the 401k plan, you're just going to maximize that as you put money out, take money out of your account. And if you can still put money into an IRA, then, you, then a well-off person might still have the money to put to max out the IRA or like a SEP in that case. When you're talking about a high deductible health insurance, it's kind of a weird thing because usually you would think that, th that, that if you were a, a well-off individual, then you might not have the high deductible uh, health plan and, and, and therefore you don't have, and so you might be work so, so that's why this one's a little bit tricky, right? Because, because you might have the cash flow to put the money in or do the last minute cash planning, but you're probably maybe working with people that don't have the cash flow and therefore have to kind of manage it, you know, through the year, because at the year end, you can imagine situations where you have the cash flow that you could put into this if you had the money and you could put money into possibly an IRA uh, if you had the money to help you out with your taxes. But again, you'll, you'll need the cash flow to do that and so on. Okay, so that's the general idea. So the general idea with these, these plans, if you, if, if, if you qualify for the plan, you have the high deductible health insurance plan and so on, then the question is, is it something that can be set up through your work, possibly making it easier to take the deductions by having them withheld from your paycheck, it being easier to calculate because the employer will take care of the tax consequences in essence by reducing the income in box one of the W-2, which makes it at least easier to report on that side. However, if the employer doesn't do that or they don't maximize their contribution, then you might be able to set up your own health savings account, which you would think would be you know, fairly easy to do by going to your financial institution like a bank and then setting it up that way if you qualify for it. When you put the money in, you get the tax benefit either by reducing line one on the W-2 or if it's not done through the employer by the adjustment to income, which kind of has the same impact on the adjusted gross income is the general idea. And that is that. And then when the account grows, then hopefully that'll be a tax-free thing as it earns interest. And if it wasn't under the umbrella of a savings account, you'd have to pay taxes as it grows. And then when you take the money out, hopefully you spend it on items that are, that are qualified, in which case you might not have to include it in income, but that's where you have to be very careful to make sure that you're spending it on the proper things. Otherwise, it might be something you have to include in income, which also could be subject to then the tax and the penalties and so on. And we looked at that a little bit when we looked at the income side of things, and that's on the Schedule 1, and I think it's, on, it's under Other Income from Form uh, 8889. So you could see the, the, the calculation on Form 8889 where you have the health savings account. Part one is, just, is the HSA contributions. So we're talking about the deductible side. Part two, HSA distributions. If you file in a joint, both returns, you and your spouse each have separate HSAs, complete a separate part two for uh, each spouse. And I won't go into that in detail right now, but just note, and then part three, income and additional tax for failure to maintain 
uh, the HDHP high deductible uh, health uh, plan coverage. So I won't go into the to the to the details on the two individuals, but this is another area where remember when two people are are separate, they're two separate entities, but then they come together in marriage and heart and soul becomes one as well as the taxable entity is now one. But then you've got all these weird things that happen where where you know they still have tax consequences tied to a single social security number and 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 that kind of thing which could come into play uh at times as well and also if they're married you have to be careful of the married filing separate situation because that often complicates the the deductibility of things as well